Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I am Rick Bennett. September 11th, 1857 was the site of the largest mass murder in American history at the time, the Mountain Meadows Massacre. The only person executed for that was John D. Lee. What was his role in that? In our next conversation with Steve Mayfield, we'll talk more about the history of the Mountain Meadows Massacre and John D. Lee's role in it. Check out our conversation. Hey, I just wanted to let you know of a cool experience I had this week. Last week, I had lunch with Kurt Frankham of the Leading LDS Podcast. I don't know if you've listened, but it was, there were some pretty cool episodes. We had a great lunch, and so I'd just like to recommend his podcast. And no, he didn't pay me for saying that, but it's a good podcast, so check it out. Now back to our conversation. Well, I see you've got another, uh, I think you said this was an old newspaper article. Yeah. Um, it's Frank Leslie Illustrated Newspaper. Um, I have to say that uh, I have a, a, a friend down in, in Rocky Ridge, which is uh-huh. now near Nephi. Is, is, I don't like him. Uh, Malcolm Veckery is his name. Uh-huh. He's a member of the AUB Church, which is a polygamous uh, church. Um, they're the ones at the uh, point of the mountain is where their headquarters is. But he's okay. down in Rocky Ridge. But AUB, you know, that's Cody Brown's group. Yes, sister wife. Cody Brown's. And, okay. uh, well, we've gone down. Very nice guy. Very friendly guy. But open, you know. Uh, I, I said to, and Craig Foster introduced me to them because Craig's done a lot of work. But you go into their home. He's only got two wives. Only. <laughs> only. <laughs> um, but very warm, very welcoming. Well, he collects books and things. So one day we're down there having dinner on one Sunday. And he just says, I got something. He goes in and he pulls these out. These, like, these are not photocopies. These are actual newspapers from... 1877. Wow. And it's about John D. Lee and Mount Meadows. And he says, And that's John D. Lee in the yeah, coffin, in the right? Picture. Yeah, Where, that's him in the yeah. coffin and the picture up here, yeah. the drawing. And it was like, <laughs> he, he, he uh, just gives me, he says, well, what do I owe you for? Oh, nothing. And I said, well, who do you want me to hurt? You know, and you just want to beat up. Said, oh. <laughs> Which is very gracious. Because mm-hmm. that is his business. One of the things he does makes money is selling these things, like many of our friends who are book dealers. And so it's like, wow. That, that is just a generosity that, you know, you just you oh, don't look. Cool. So it's an actual newspaper. So tell us who John D. Lee was. John D. Lee was a young man from back east. He was a, uh, I don't know, I think he joined the church as a young man. He was an adopted son of Brigham Young. Came out. Now, the interesting thing about that is he was actually older than Brigham Young. Did you know that? I, I think you're right, yes. yes, yes. So, but, but he had that tight connection with Brigham Young. Right. Well, he goes down to southern Utah, northern Arizona, and settles down there. There's a place not far from Page, Arizona, on the Utah side called Lee's Ferry. It was when he only lived there a couple years, but it was where they could go across the Colorado River. So let's jump a little bit back in time, um, because as I recall, so, so John D. Lee lived in Nauvoo, uh, was there when the prophet was, was killed, um, was sealed to Joseph, or excuse me, to Brigham, back when they um, had the what they called the law of adoption. I know yeah. my namesake, Dr. Richard Bennett, no relation. Kind of like, <laughs> yeah. So uh, kind of like the Millers there, no relation there. But yeah. um, so he talked a little bit about, 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 about the law of adoption. Um, so at any rate, so, so, so John D. Lee was sealed to Brigham as a, as a son. Right. Everybody came west, uh, Brigham became governor. Mm-hmm. And um, so what was it? It was 1857, I believe. It was Mountain Meadows. The Mountain Meadows Massacre. So and what was John D. Lee's role in the Well, in he the was Mountain on the Meadows. subordinates to it because he had other church leaders, um, Higby, um, I've forgotten the names, of, but a number yeah. of other people. Dame, William Dame. Dame, Higby. Um, uh, there's a Klingon Smith, I know. Yeah, Klingon Smith, who were really in charge. He was just one of the m- military leaders, but... In the Nauvoo Legion? Yes. So the Nauvoo Legion here, here in yeah. Utah. And um, they were the ones that committed the atrocity of killing these people from Arkansas. Now, what, was, what, were, what were the Mormons upset? Because the, the Fantric Party, as I understand, they came down through northern Utah on their, and then going through southern Utah on their way to California. Yeah. What, what precipitated that? A lot of rumors. Again, <laughs> you're talking about a topic we could talk for the next 20 years oh, about. Yeah. Um, well, just, something just about, because sketch. people would go through, but something about this group. Now, according to the Mormons, and they're the ones that survived, 
that these people were making threats at them, poisoning the water, poisoning the animals, saying we're going to come join the army and come back. Because there was the army coming out to Utah. Um, but, yeah, so there were rumblings because of, yeah. pol- well, there was su- supposedly a Mormon rebellion. Yes. And so was it Buchanan that was Buchanan president? sent the army, the was Johnson's the, army. But he hadn't sent it yet. Yeah, but there were rumors. There were rumors that they were sent Then you also the had uh, Parley Pratt being murdered. Um, so you have this stuff. For some reason, the Mormons got, and, and, you know, and, and Robert Briggs, out of a lawyer in Southern California, called it the fog of war. Something uh, Robert McNamara talked about the Vietnam War, why the atrocities happened. The fog of war blinded people. And for one thing, they went after these folks for a three day siege down there in the mountain meadows, killed all the adults and saved, except for some children they saved. Then they kind of hid it, hid the story about it. Yeah. Uh, well, so, because as I recall, let's let's talk a little bit more about the massacre. So, and especially Lee's involvement in that. Yeah. So basically, what happened, as, as I as I understand it, um, I need to, I'm trying, still trying to get Rick Turley to get on here. And, yes. <laughs> but we're having a little trouble there. But at any rate, um, so the Fancher Party's coming down. They're kind of like these street preachers. They're just being really taunting. According, and an, yeah. according to the Mormons. Yeah. Plus, in fact, with, with the onset of the army, they weren't getting supplies from the Mormons. We're not going to help you because we've yeah. got to support ourselves. Because Brigham had said, we need we, we need all the supplies. We're not yeah. going to sell any to immigrants. So right off the bat, again, there's that butting of the head. And the immigrants needed it in yeah. order to get to California. Yeah. And so, yeah. So there was some issues there going on. And and as, as I recall, so Brigham Brigham had told everybody, don't sell to any immigrants. Yeah. Period. And so the the Fancher Party, mm-hmm. in the worst timing possible, yeah. <laughs> comes during this very t- tense time. Right. Tries to buy some um, some supplies. The Mormons won't sell supplies, and so yeah. so they were pretty ticked off yeah. about that. And for whatever reason, they got their amount of metal, metals. They were surrounded. And now Lee was an Indian agent, right? Yes. Wasn't he the Indian agent? So he yeah. was kind of in charge of yeah. talking to the Indians. He, like that was actually a government position. Is yes. that right? So, um, so, and I guess this is where, uh, <laughs> this is where it gets really confusing yeah. because, you know, it's kind of a he said, he said sort of a thing yeah. where, you know, you've got the Fanchers aren't here to speak for themselves. Right. <laughs> Um, but at any rate, so it seems like Lee had talked to the Indians and said, hey, if you want to attack this Fancher mm-hmm. party, you're welcome to it. Yeah. Take take all their stuff because yeah. we're, we're ticked off about them. Yeah. Um, so the Indians, as I understand it, uh, uh, tried to attack the Fancher party. The Fancher party circled their wagons and, and basically fought off the attack. Yeah. Um, and so now... So, so what happened next? Well, again, <laughs> I could talk for years on it. And I see this bookcase over here is all Mountain Meadows yeah. and related. Um, they went there with the idea, we're going to help these people, but turn, turned on them. Uh, you know, again, what was going through their minds, I don't know uh, of why they would do that. Um, the whole argument that seems to be is how much were the church leaders in Salt Lake involved right. with ordering this? Was this a thing that these saints in that area did on their own uh, without? Mm-hmm. Now, we know that after they had these people surrounded, a, a writer was sent to Salt Lake. And Brigham, what she would do, he sends like, Haslam back and says, leave them alone. By that time, it was all done. Yeah, because there was no telegraph back no. in the day. In fact, the telegraph, Brigham Young, Put in the telegraph so that they wouldn't have these communication problems. Yeah. But yeah, so a writer goes from basically was it Cedar City or Saint? Yeah, George? Cedar City. City yeah. Cedars, and he goes to um, to ask Brigham what to do. He mm. comes back, and the the settlers are already dead. Yeah. Okay. So as I understand it, from from what I understand with the Mountain Nose massacre, so you know there's a lot of tensions going on. The Indians. So John D. Lee kind of spurs the Indians to attack. Um, says it's going to be an easy target, but it's not an yeah. easy target. And so so they surround themselves. So John D. Lee and William Dame and Klingon Smith yeah. and Higby, they're kind of the leaders of this whole thing. Right. Um, so they come out and they say, well, if you'll turn over your weapons, we'll, we'll save you from the Indians. Yeah. So as I understand it, um, every so every Mormon man had a gun, Yeah. was walking the... The may the men from the Fancher party out, mm-hmm. and then the women and children were kind of in the back, 
and and somebody gave a signal. Was it Lee that gave the signal? I can't remember. So, something to the been. effect of "Do your duty," and then every Mormon man turned to the Fancher and shot and killed yeah. killed him. And then they left the women and children to be attacked by the Indians. Yeah. Again, again you got so many different stories, and as right. the fact is, I think they realized, whoops, because when they reported back to Brigham and Salt Lake, what happened is not what they actually did you know they they kind of lied to Brigham because because Lee was one of the people that 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 uh, w- that went to Brigham and mm-hmm. told him what happened yeah. uh, but he but he lied about it yeah and and one of the interesting things is that uh, supposedly the church or the church leaders tried to hide this but I got an, uh, I saw an article in the New York Times two months later before the end of the year we're talking about this massacre of white people down in southern Utah I mean it wasn't it's not like we have instant news today, but it was very quick when it started going around. And uh, when the government comes and then they, they look into it, and again, the Johnson's army there and all the government investigation, here comes Mount Meadows in the middle of it. Now, of course, you, know, uh, you have Brigham kind of telling John D. Lee to take off and hide and because yeah. they were trying to find the, and of course it was twenty years later when they okay. So let's let's make sure we've got those details there. So so Lee participates in the massacre. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, he wasn't the only person that right. participated no, he in the was, massacre. He was a minor. He was a major player, but he was not the lead in this whole. He was not the lead, um, and I guess there's a dispute as to whether he was the one that issued the mm-hmm. the order. Um, right. Do your duty mm-hmm. is the order supposedly. Um, or not. So there's there's a lot of dispute as to who actually <laughs> said that, and you know a lot of like I said, we could talk for the next twenty years about yeah. it. Like I said, and we have various parties because the whole issue really is not that there was an atrocity, but what did Salt Lake know about it? Right. And did they order it? And that's the new book coming out with Richard Turley yeah. and Barbara Jones Brown. Right. So I and, and of course we have our, our our friend Will Bagley who's promoting one view of it. Yeah. Who who go to his grave promoting that idea? Others, how do you protect? And, it, and, and the fact is that uh, there were so many things of, of, I mean, my old professor at Weaver Staging Session said, well, the church leaders in order, but they did a good job of trying to cover it up when they found out what was going right. on. Well, in fact, you got the army coming down. And then I go back to what Brick said, the fog of war. When you have all this stuff going on, you don't know what's going on. Uh, when you see what happens with Johnson's army, well, they're ready to burn down Salt Lake and head to the mountains, right. you know, and... and uh, yeah, we did it before we'll move again, you know, and that's when they went down to Camp Floyd and settled outside of Salt Lake, so they wouldn't have those problems. There was a very high, high uh, war, you know, fighting attitude going on or, or fear there, and right in, the, right in the middle of it, here you have Mountain Meadows, which does not go over well. Mm-hmm. Uh, those Mormons out there are just killing people left and right, and we had other instances of individuals being killed, from the Gunnison thing to well, the parishes. All this stuff is that there's this Western you know, activity going on of killing people, you know, and that was, cut, yeah, was there was all, a lot of vigilante justice out here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, again, like, you know, that's not my expertise other than the one. Okay. Well, let's, let's just tell this okay. for a second, then we'll get to that, where your expertise is. But <laughs> Okay. So, so at any rate, as, as the story goes, at least as I understand it, mm-hmm. Lee, after the massacre, um, goes up to Brigham Young, lies about it, yeah. lies about his, the whole thing, says, blames it all on the Indians. Yeah. We had nothing to do with it. And, and in his diary, he says, because people were saying in the newspapers from back east that Brigham knew, he says, Brigham knew nothing about it until I told him. That's in his diaries, you know. Oh, really? So he didn't know nothing about it until I told him. And he okay, so he, was, so he was sent up to tell, yeah. hey, all these people died, but we had nothing the to Indians, do with it. Indians, yeah. Yeah, it was all the Indians, blames, blames the Indians for the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so, so at any rate, so Brigham, at least as we understand it, the best we can, now Will Bagley disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> um, thinks that Brigham in was on the whole thing. Um, but uh, so with... So he lies about it, and so Brigham is a little bit worried and tries to protect John D. Lee and sends him to Arizona. I think you were talking Lee's about Ferry. Lee's Ferry, yeah. right? To, to kind of hide him, basically. Yeah. So can you, can you talk a little bit about Lee's Ferry then? Okay, well, Lee's Ferry is a little outpost <laughs> uh, near the Colorado River. It's, it takes a couple miles to drive in off the major highway. It's an old rock fort. Uh, 
Um, Lee was only there a couple of years. The north of that is a little farming area called Lonely Dale, which is a very nice little thing, but it's really obscure. Lee wasn't there that long, but it got his name because this was where they would come across the river, the Colorado River, because it winds down through that section of town or of the, of the state. Um, but he wasn't there that long. <laughs> Again, it was just one of the many places. He, he lived up in Parowan. I think John D. Lee's buried in Parowan. And uh, so he would transfer out until it finally got to the point where uh, somebody had to be tried. And he became the one. Not that he was innocent, but because yeah. the others kind of got off on it, and he was the one that was found guilty. So when was, when was the trial? Oh, you know? uh, in 1875, 76. Okay, so uh, the, yeah. the massacre occurs in 1857. 20 years later. It's about 20 years later that, that the trial actually happens. Mm -hmm. and, and Brigham, They had one, he was acquitted, then they did another one where he was found guilty. Yeah, so from what I understand, because I've got some of those, if you want to pull out those Mountain Meadows massacre books, those are, <laughs> believe it or not, I've actually read those. And the interesting, well, go ahead and show oh, those okay. to the camera. This but, is the, um, um, this yeah. is the, let's see, this is the collected legal papers. And um, so that's volume one, and then we've got volume, volume two, two yep. which is the this, trial. Same thing. And at, so these are yeah. raw documents. Now, I know, because I went to the uh, book signing. In fact, I think I saw you at that yeah. one. And because um, Richard Turley, Janice Johnson, and Lejean Carruth. So yeah. Lejean is, is fantastic because she transcribed yeah. a lot of these court records. I know one of the things that Richard Turley said was, they, everybody thinks they knows about they know about the the Mountain Meadows massacre, but nobody had ever actually transcribed the record. And one of the things that he was finding mm -hmm. was you needed to get like original source documents, and a lot of these were in shorthand. And so Lejean is the one who mm -hmm. who put those together. I, I actually talked to Lejean and I asked her if she would be interviewed, and she said no because she said she was almost getting post traumatic stress disorder because mm. the the trial notes were so graphic and this was such a yeah. horrible atrocity um and so mm. um she just she she just didn't feel comfortable talking about that but yeah. it really was a tremendous tragedy but richard and janice i know we're, we're just saying we've got to get before we can really tell the story we have to have like original source documents and so that's yes. what those two volumes are yeah so they're they're original they're not there's no narrative in them mm -hmm. um well, and so I've read through them, but they're, I, I'm waiting for the next book. Yeah. The one that's been taking all these years. Yeah. Yeah. And so, because, do you have his other book, uh, Richard's yeah. other book? Um, uh, oh, where's, oh, yeah, Massacre. Massacre at Mountain Meadows. Yeah. This is the first one. That's first the line. first one. Yeah. And so that ends basically at the massacre. Yeah. And um, that's, a, that's a fantastic book, too. Um, mm -hmm. And let's see, Ron, Ron, Ron Walker, Walker Glenn Richard Leonard, Turley. and Richard Turley. Yeah. yeah, so they they put that one together, and so they sign they, um, they basically stopped at the massacre, and so the next book is supposed to be about yeah. the the cover up. Yeah, and and how much did Brigham Young know, know no. and yeah. when did he know it? And I again, think it's, kind of it's one of those things. You know, I have a list of the ten biggest controversies in Mormon history. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is, of course, polygamy, which outdoes everybody else. Right. But as you go down the list. Mount Meadows is one of the controversies because even after 150 some odd years, it's still a major topic. People oh, yeah. always bring it up. Yeah. Um, well, Hoffman's on the top 10 list. Well, and Hoffman has some stuff to do with that. We're, yeah, we're we'll get, get into that. Minute, but. but, but yeah, yeah, it, it, it's just the fact that it's interesting how you're talking about the Western U.S. in the 1800s. You know, um, one of the classic ones I have is uh, we have, know about Billy the Kid and, and all these cowboys, Jesse James and all that. And yet the one person who's probably killed more than all of them combined was Porter Rockwell. At least that's what the claim is. You know, Porter Rockwell killed more people than Billy Kidd, J Jesse James, and all these other outlaws back at the time. And, you know, and how much, in fact, he was claimed to have killed somebody two years after he actually died. It's one of the myths on him, you know, and I've seen, you know, and it, it's just, there's a line. And George told me to give this line, okay? So I'm going to do George it now. Throckmorton. Throckmorton. When we've given lectures and discussions, we, we quote one movie, a line from one movie. And if anybody, whenever you hear what I say today, this is it. There was a movie that came out in the, uh, I think, 1950s, early 1960s, called The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. John Wayne, Jimmy Stewart, Lee Marvin. And it's a story about Jimmy Stewart 
who comes back to this old town in some western state to bury his friend, John Wayne, who had died. Well, his notoriety came because when he showed up in this town, he was a lawyer, and he's credited with killing the outlaw uh, Liberty Valance, played by Marvin, and beautifully done. He's evil. He's given credit with killing this guy because he was a bad guy. Eventually, he goes on to be the governor of this new, ter- new state, the senator and ambassador, and as the editor of the paper uh, says, with a snap of your fingers, you could be the next vice president of the United States. So when he and his wife show up, and wife had to be the old girlfriend of John Wayne in the movie, shows up for the funeral, the, the editor of the paper says, well, we want to find out the true story. What's going on here? Because you're a senator. Boy, this is big news. Well, he tells them the story, but what he tells them at the end is that when they rehearsed the scene where he shoots Liberty Valance, he didn't shoot Liberty Valance. It was John Wayne in an alleyway who shoots and kills uh, Liberty Valance. But yet, Jimmy Stewart gets the credit and becomes this famous person, and John Wayne's just this little farmer. So that's who this guy is, this guy we came to bury, his friend. Well, here's a reporter writing all this stuff down. So when he gets down with the story telling I'm not the guy that did it, the editor takes the notes, tears them up, throws the notes in the fire. Oh, 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 oh Jimmy Stewart, you're not going to use that story, Mr. Editor? He says, no. And here's the line. This is the West, sir. When the legend becomes fact, print the legend. <laughs> that is very productive in Mormon history and history altogether, where the legend is more important than the actual facts. Hmm. And I've seen that with a lot of things of history. And we get into Hoffman, <laughs> that, yeah. a lot of that. Um, but that, that's just a great line. And, and it, I always remember that when I hear stories, whether it's Mormon history or American history, you know, I mean, I mean, George Washington didn't stand up in the boat going across the Delaware? Of course not. <laughs> no, did he cut down the church? We don't know. <laughs> but sometimes history is built that way. The, the novels, the Western novels of the 1800s, <laughs> you know, uh, are not that way. I, I read of stories about Wyatt Earp, you know, never shot, never injured or anything, you know. Great career as a lawman, you know. But half the stuff wasn't true. You know? <laughs> but... I think we, that's the problem we have. With it. We don't try to find the truth. We have today in politics, fake news, you know. Mm-hmm. Did they really say that? really mean it? You know, and that's the sad aspect of our society and our culture and our humanity because we want to believe things that aren't true. And I'm sure a lot of people say, well, you believe in the Book of Mormon. You believe, in, oh, well, you know, now we're going, you know, going crazy on it. But um, uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things that happens with history. Mm-hmm. So, I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Steve Mayfield. In our next conversation, we'll talk about the Dead Lee Scroll. What is that? It's a, a piece of lead, very thin, so it's not hard it's a thing. That story has an inscription written by John D. Lee, showing that Brigham Young, uh, suggesting Brigham Young and George A. Smith, who was an apostle back at that time, mm-hmm. were who the St. George is actually named after. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, a cousin of Joseph Smith. Where did authorize uh, the Mount Meadows. I hope you enjoyed that short clip from our next interview. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please go to our patreon.com slash gospel tangents and subscribe for just $5 a month. If you'd like a transcript of this, please click the yellow subscribe button at gospeltangents.com and I'll send you this and all future transcripts. Also, if you'd like a paperback like we've got here, those are available at our website at Amazon.com. Just do a search for Gospel Tangents. Please get all updates at our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash Gospel Tangents. We're also on Twitter at Gospel Tangents. You can also get transcripts individually at our website, GospelTangents.com slash shop. Finally, make sure that you subscribe on our Apple podcast page. Just do a quick search for uh, Gospel Tangents there and give us a five-star review while you're at it. Thanks again for listening. Your support helps create more Mormon history classes and podcasts such as this. And so I really appreciate you listening. Please share with your friends. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here you'll see some more of our great videos. Thanks again.